Hello, my name is Bogdana Nemtsu and this is module number four entitled Social Sustainability. This is the second class which focuses on how we define social sustainability. During the last session, we discussed about the concept of social sustainability. We offered some definitions. We talked about traditional and emerging concepts in social sustainability, as well as about overlapping concepts. This session has a different focus and it deals with social sustainability in an urban context. We are also discussing about the assessment of social sustainability in an urban context. A first question we try to answer is why are we even talking about sustainable communities or sustainable cities? Portney, a famous author in this field, argues that the evolution of the sustainable development concept includes four stages. In the beginning, we have sustainability, which more or less was equal to carrying capacity. This concept has roots in biology and ecology. Then, we have sustainable development, which focuses on the interplay between economic development and the protection of the environment. A third stage looks at sustainable communities. This concept was born out of the understanding of the importance of the individual behavior and of the context of local government in which it takes place. Finally, at the fourth level, we have sustainable cities. This is due to the fact that cities are the administrative units at the lowest level, dealing with many issues that are in practice linked to sustainable development. This is the reason why we have that slogan coming from Agenda 21, uh, which says, think globally, act locally. Some of the themes that are associated with social sustainability clearly show the difficulty of separating social activity from the physical setting in which it takes place. And this physical setting can be equated with cities or local communities. Authors such as Jenks and Dempsey argue that the concept of sustainable communities implicitly means that a territorial dimension is applied to social sustainability. You have to know that the concept of sustainable communities occurred in the agenda of European urban policy in 2005, when the Bristol Accord was approved. What is Bristol Agreement or Accord? It deals with sustainable communities and defines them as places where people want to live and work now and in the future. Such sustainable communities meet the diverse needs of existing and future residents, are sensitive to the environment and contribute to high quality of life. They are safe and inclusive, well planned, built and run and offer equality of opportunity and good services for all. There are other authors and other reports that provide similar definitions for sustainable um, communities. A different definition uh, states that sustainable communities are those communities which meet the diverse needs of existing and future residents. Their children and other users contribute to a high quality of life and provide opportunity and choice. They achieve this in a way that make effective use of natural resources, enhance the environment, promote social cohesion and inclusion, and strengthen economic prosperity. If you examine carefully the previously cited definition, you will see that some keywords include needs, 
quality of life social cohesion. If you remember from last time, all these elements are either traditional or emerging topics within social sustainability. Another author, Dempsey, says that sustainability of communities mainly relates to collective aspects of social life. The following dimensions, such as social interactions, social networks in the community, participation in collective groups and networks in the community, community stability, pride and sense of place, and safety and security. Again, these are all topics included under social sustainability. These dimensions illustrate the shift towards soft themes under the umbrella of social sustainability. In many cases, it is also a shift from the individual toward the collectivity or the community as a whole. One important aspect when we are talking about social sustainability in an urban context is how we can measure it. How do we know when a city or a community achieves social sustainability? This topic of measurement will be addressed in a separate future lecture. In this section, I just want to examine one specific metric uh, which comes out of the Egan Review uh, it's a policy that was developed in the UK trying to provide sustainable communities indicators. And uh, this report illustrates some of the shifts emerging with regards to social sustainability assessment. Why do we decided um, to focus on this metric? This is because even though it is context specific, as I told you, it was developed in the UK. It is still generally enough to be replicated in other urban settings. It could be used at least as a starting point when we are trying to develop some such measurement systems for our own countries and our own cities. Uh, how did we get to this Egan review? In April 2003, the UK government commissioned a review of the skills needed to deliver sustainable communities. Skills were supposed to include both professional, but also built environment skills and so-called generic skills. Egan report was published in 2004 and it comprises seven key components of sustainable communities you will see that some of them are clearly linked to what we discussed as being social sustainability. Others are more clearly linked to the physical environment. I will briefly go over the seven components, but then I will focus on the ones that are clearly linked to social sustainability. So we have the social, and cultural the social and cultural dimension where it looks at vibrant, harmonious and inclusive communities. We have a second dimension which is governments, governance and it looks at effective and, and inclusive participation, representation and leadership. We have transport and connectivity, we have services at the local level we have the environmental uh, dimension, we have the economy, housing and the built environment, and very interesting, a, a new dimension was added to the seven already defined in the Egan report. This new dimension was labeled fair for everyone, emphasizing the equity theme in the sustainable community uh, debate. For each of the seven dimensions that, that I mentioned before, the Egan report has between four and nine indicators. In the end, there were a 
approximately 50 indicators, including a mixture of subjective and objective data input. In certain cases, objective data are more relevant than the subjective ones, and the vice versa is also true in other situations. As stated in the report, the subjective input obtained from residents is equally important to the objective data because ultimately the citizens are the ones who live in that community. Also, it's important to uh, realize that the report acknowledges that various indicators work at different scales. The decision about what scale to use rests primarily with the local authorities. On slide 10, I included the social and cultural dimension, which is extremely relevant for our topic of social sustainability in an urban context. Please look at the items or indicators that are listed under this dimension of social and cultural and observe how many of them are based on the perception of the residents and how many of them are based on hard objective data. For example, if you look at item number five, you will see that we have percentage of respondents surveyed who feel they belong to the neighborhood. This is clearly an indicator based on perception on how people feel about their community. If you look at item number 10, domestic burglaries per 1,000 households and the percentage that were detected, you clearly have an indicator which is based on objective data. These are data that are provided by the local police. The next dimension is the governance dimension. It is also very much linked to social sustainability. Again, please examine the items or indicators used under governance and observe again how many of them are based on perception and how many of them are based on hard objective data. You have to be aware of the fact a lot of the issues pertaining to social sustainability will be measured based on perception. This doesn't make social sustainability or governance less relevant, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to measure. can see if you are carefully examining the indicators listed in the two examples from the Egan report that we are having a departure from the basic needs approach and more dimensions are oriented toward governance and institutional factors. This is a shift that exists not only in this area of social sustainability but in other areas of local government. Also, you can see that all dimensions of sustainability are starting to gain more equal weight and that numerous indicators are no longer based exclusively on statistic data but rather on a mix of qualitative and, quantity and quantitative indicators. As I was telling you before, you can't judge indicators and the dimension based on whether uh, they are um, researched based on qualitative or quantitative indicators. The type of data used depends on the issue that we want to measure.